Okay, <laughs> it's really nice to be here. Thanks so much, Glo. I'm really inspired by, by everything you do. I'm a traveler myself and I've been in the road for seven years already. And I feel difficult to, to find a partner. I feel uh, like what is the first step to, to find that connection when you, when you are, are always in the move? Because it seems like everything passed so fast and then suddenly the, the war stopped. And it's so difficult to start uh, like connecting with people again because there are so many fears behind. So that's what's happening to me now. You know, I, I love that you asked this because when I look at myself and some of my flaws, <laughs> I try to like overanalyze, over-optimize and hyper-plan everything. And I'm like, Glow, you can't force or control love. And that's probably why I suck at it because I'm like trying to like figure out, okay, if I stop traveling at this time and I go to this country, then I will find the person by asking these 10 questions. And it doesn't work like that. And it's, love is almost this like ultimate act of surrender. We have to allow that like, we are putting ourselves in positions to meet incredible people and allowing conversations to be organic. Because I think one thing that sometimes women, we tend to do is we get straight to like <laughs> the hardcore questions at the beginning. Where do you want to live? How many kids do you want? Like, <laughs> when are you trying to get married? Like, what's your engagement length and <laughs> all that kind of stuff. But I think if you take the pressure off of the next person that you meet that you just start to feel butterflies about, like, oh my gosh, this person could be the one, allow yourself to get to know them as a person first, a lover second. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times when we feel that emotional and physical attraction to someone, we're so anxious to like make it work. And now we have this box of like, okay, this person is gonna be my partner. And so now I gotta make sure they fit into this perfect box that I've created. Or it's like, you can get to know them and let them create a box with you. And there's an analogy that a lot of people use is that when you're coming into a relationship, someone has a suitcase of their luggage. You're, and then the other person has a suitcase of their luggage. And mm. now you can only travel with one uh, suitcase. So yeah. you have to take stuff from your suitcase and their suitcase, <laughs> put it into one and somehow fit and hope it's not overweight or else mm. you have to pay the excess luggage fee. <laughs> But that's not an option here. Okay, so it, it's really hard. And of course, you know, you get lonely on the road. I have a journal, uh, a husband journal. And I ah. just basically, I know it's kind of creepy. I can't believe I'm sharing this. <laughs> it's like letters that I'm writing to my future husband to one day be able to give him and say, I've been waiting for you. I've been patient, but here's what I've been like manifesting. And so it's just a little journal that I got off of Amazon. So maybe that might help you just writing like future love letters to your partner <laughs> and, and one day hoping to give it to them. <laughs> wow. Yes. It's a good idea. Wow. Thanks so much. Of course. Where are you going next? Can I squeeze that question in? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I'm going to France, to Cannes. So, oh, amazing. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm I, I, I currently back in my hometown in Chile. So oh. before the pandemic started, I traveled 77 countries. And my goal was to visit <laughs> each country in the world to portray the ethnic diversity and cultural richness. So I was so uh, uh, focused in that project that I forget about that other part of... I love myself, but I feel like it's now time to uh, share that part, that adventure with someone special. Oh, I Thanks feel so much. you. I feel Thanks you. so much, Brandon, for everything you oh, do. Man. I, I know you. everything you are doing and I'm so grateful for everything. So Alicia, Alicia, Alicia. Yeah, Alicia, Alicia, I'll answer to both. Oh my goodness. Thank you for taking my question, Glow. I was just actually writing it down. Anyway, so my question to you is, I have literally just started to get really comfortable with sharing my story um, and my, you know, being vulnerable. I've just started a podcast and one of the Thank you. One of the um, last episodes was about dealing with grief. So when you spoke about your dad, um, I lost my mum also. So, you know, from that perspective, it's quite hard to then, to then replenish yourself after that. So I wanted to know how you replenish yourself after you've been very vulnerable. 
You know, I have a very, I have to have very strict boundaries with the way I use social media because I want you guys to understand social media content is like <laughs> junk food. And, I, and I, every time I say something, I don't want you guys to take it the wrong way, but a podcast, an article, that's, that's salad. Social media is junk food because if all you're doing is consuming social media all day, that's junk highlight reels, random opinions, you know, random people, bad facts, bad story. Like <laughs> you're getting all of this randomness and like, that's not healthy. But if you take yourself away from like the quick bites of social media and you just sit down with the podcast that maybe is like a podcast episode on grievance or mm -hmm. a, a, an article on grieving, you know, and you sit with a wholesome piece of con content, like that was, super helpful for my healing and super helpful for me kind of bouncing back. But with social media, I come on to post, I, I double tap a few comments, as many comments as I can. I'm just like, <laughs> just to, you know, just to engage in the comments a little bit. And then I hop off and I live my life and I, and I serve my community and I, and I read books and I play the piano and I have hobbies that fill my cup back up. But if I, I, if I lived my life on social media, I'm not sure I would have this level of energy and joy. So I want you to give yourself permission to pour into yourself, pour into others because you know you wanna serve your community, but make sure you're pouring into yourself first. Thank you so much for saying that because that's what I've been doing. And you know, sometimes you feel like I should be over there, you know, doing the whole social media thing, but I've just been quite in the mind. So thank you. Thank you for saying that. And what's great is social media is gonna be around for ever like you know we're gonna be <laughs> i'm gonna be 102 like hey guys what's up <laughs> isn't it crazy like it's gonna be around forever you know so I, I don't want you guys to ever feel like you've missed the mark with like having your moment like you have tomorrow you have next week you have next month give yourself grace show up when you're ready and social media will be there when you're ready so dr duni atalabi the part that resonated with me, which I actually is my question, okay. recovering people pleasers <laughs> with trust issues. Me, you, same thing. <laughs> so my, my, my question is, how do you um, catapult yourself from, or catapult your recovery or kind of facilitate your recovery? Because I think I do need a faster recovery and there's no like, AA or people please are anonymous that I could join. So please <laughs> help us. Okay. That is hilarious. I, I had to learn that glow. If you don't love yourself enough to give boundaries, people will see that. And one thing, when you are a kind person and you have a big heart, you will attract leeches. There's a reason mosquitoes flock to the light. Or what are the bugs? The, the one that get buzzed when they go to the light. <laughs> There's a reason the, the, the leeches are attracted to the light. They can see your big heart. They can see that you, you're a giver. They can see that you're kind. And they're like, how much can I milk out of this big hearted person? And I used to be like, people would literally use their trauma. Like, a, like they would use their trauma to bond us. If we bonded over similar trauma, that's called a trauma bond that is not healthy. If the only time you talk to someone is when you're bonding over trauma, that is a big red flag that they are like not in a, a good place and they probably need to see a therapist and they probably need to unpack that in a different way. But I, I realized there were people in my life that trauma bonded us. And I because I was recovering out of my trauma, I could see there, um, I, I went from trauma to triumph, but I can see where there was a void. And I'm like, okay, well, they're, they're comfortable sharing it with me. So I guess I gotta fill it. So I got, I got to be their, their mother, their nurturer, their financial provider. Oh, they're, they're complaining that they can't do this. Let me do it for them. I was enabling like very toxic behavior because I didn't know how to set a boundary. So for me, it was like, people will respect you more when they, when they notice there's a boundary. And when, when I get emails, so I get dozens of emails daily, like, Glow, I would love to have you on my podcast. Glow, do this, do this. In the past, because I didn't like know what I was worth. I was like, oh yes, I'll do everything to make everyone happy because I'm a good person. I got a big heart. If I say yes to everyone, they'll all love me. Nope, they will use you and they will abuse you. <laughs> Sorry, not everyone, not everyone. <laughs> let, me not, let me not speak in absolutes here. But I had to get to a place of like, okay, Glow, what actually excites you? What's aligned with who you're becoming? 
it, when I say no to people now, so many of them now can respect that like, like oh, this, this comes from a good place. And it's not a no period. I know there's a lot of memes that say no is a complete sentence. And I'm like, well, not in my vocabulary. No needs a comma and. And Brene Brown really speaks about this well. It's no and I thank you for considering me. No and I appreciate the offer. No and circle back in a few months and let's talk, you know? So it, it's an act of self-love. I, I don't know if there's like a, a, a thought process there's another book that I'm reading, um, Relational Intell Intelligence by Dr. Darius Daniels. And what he talks about is not every adjustment needs an announcement. So when you're drawing a boundary, you don't have to tell the friend, hey, you're abusing my kindness, so we can't be friends anymore. Like, it's not how it works. <laughs> We're gonna have a little bit more emotional intelligence than that. Mm -hmm. But when you do start to distance yourself from people who are abusing your kindness or you feel like you've been people pleasing them it, it, it comes like one action at a time like oh can you do this for me sorry i don't have the capacity oh come back to me in a month or I, I love to use the word capacity because capacity has nothing to do with them if i do not have the capacity to do this task that's on me and it has nothing to do with you but my limited capacity like my free time is not an indication of my availability if I say I'm free on Saturday, that doesn't mean free to hang out. It means free to be in monk mode and read books all day because that's how I love myself. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Such a great question. Ooh, ask me the questions. My question is like, I'm in the business of starting something new. Um, like I want to be a coach as well. Um, and I've heard like sometimes you have to be like Teflon and don't let bad advice stick. But how do you decide whether, uh, like say for your mum when you were doing your thing, how do you decide whether you're being Teflon or your ego is getting in the way? This is good. Okay, so there's a couple... Ego is the enemy. Sorry, you guys know that I only speak in book recommendations. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna type that in really quick. Ego is the enemy by Ryan Holiday is an incredible book that speaks to the ego. And I believe that all, well, first of all, all of us have an ego. This is something that come to terms with the fact that our ego wants to protect our identity. Our ego creates this persona and all it wants to do is protect it. And I, I think you have to have a daily practice of humility where you are willing to be corrected, you are willing to take advice, you are willing to learn. And I think adapting a student mentality as a part of a core value of my mission and the way I, I show up, that helps me keep my ego in check. And you know, when it comes to my mother or when it comes to people in your life, maybe they you know, don't agree with you or they, um, are, they don't encourage you and they're trying to discourage you from chasing your dream or, or doing something meaningful or whatever it is. When it comes to d conversations with them, the best thing you can do is invite them to see what you're doing and the, the, the meaning, how it's meaningful. Invite them to see how your work is meaningful. I never try to like say like, oh, I, you know, I made it without you or I'm the reason I did this myself. No, I, 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 I never have that kind of conversation. And I think when it comes to, gosh, because this is so layered and so nuanced and I love that we're talking about this, but I think the ego is something that you have to like, constantly and consistently try to squash. And again, humility is another one of my core values. I believe that I am where I am because I, the God I serve is, 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 has blessed me more than abundantly. And I, I feel very grateful and thankful and I have a lot of gratitude for that. But I also know that nothing that I've done is of myself. It is not my own like amazing greatness that I'm here and Brennan Burchard shares his platform with me. It's like, people have seen something, people have poured into me, people have shouted my praises in rooms where I had no business being in, people have spoke highly of me because they've seen my work. And so you guys have to also approach your platform with like, am I creating content that would make Oprah proud? And this is, I, I say this as a joke, but this is actually serious, how I, how I approach my content. Oprah is my dream mentor. I want her to one day say, you know what, this glow chick, she's, I'm just gonna fly her on my private jet so I can meet her because she's so amazing. So when I show up, I'm like, am I creating content that would make Mama Oprah proud? Like, is this, you know? So I think, think of your, your dream future mentor 
and create content that they would be proud of. Does that help, Bryce? Did I answer yeah, your question? No, yeah. No, I've always like try to have humility as well, like because it turns arrogance into confidence. So yeah, humility's humility's a big thing for me. But it was just kind of like you got to listen to what they're saying, but you don't want to stop your dreams, and but you don't want your ego to get in way in case you're like you're losing something that could be very valuable. So no, thanks for that. Yeah, and just to quickly add to that as well, I think. 10% of the people in your life are gonna discourage you from whatever you're doing. And people only discourage you. Sometimes it's not even from a bad place. It's literally to protect you. They don't want you to, to see your dreams crushed. They don't want you to end up homeless. They don't want you to lose money. Like sometimes people are, are negative to you because they're trying to protect you from failure. You know, So also acknowledging that some people who don't believe in us, it comes from a good place. So uh, I just wanted to mention yeah. that. This can be your day for personal growth. This can be that day you committed to and you remember, you go, that was the day I got myself a community. I got better coaches. I committed to making my life the absolute best that I could. This is that day. Make today your growth day. Click the button on this page and sign up right now.